So once again, I would like to welcome us to our class, and we're just coming from a holiday time when some people took out some time off, and um, I hope you are fresh. Today we're supposed to look in theory terms at uh, this particular topic, accounting for intangible assets. But I thought that uh, we can start with some questions on tangible non-current assets. And without wasting too much of your time, I'd like to go to this particular document on Kaplan, tangible non-current assets. The first question says, the non-current asset register shows a carrying amount of a non of non-current assets rather of $85,600. The later accounts include a cost balance of one eighty five and an accumulated depreciation balance of um, 55. 55. Question is which of the following statements may explain the discrepancy which of the following statements may explain the discrepancy so let's pay attention and no one is here to waste time it's very important for you to start thinking about these questions in fact this is a revision kit it's not mine uh, you need to find ways of uh, Finding some time, you do some of these questions. Okay, so carrying amount in this case can be the same as you know some of these people write this. Carrying amount is the same as uh, net book what value, which is um, eighty five six hundred, and then um, what the examiner has done, he has. Um, has broken down the carrying amount in the ledger accounts in two and he's saying 185 costs and depreciation of 55 can we find the difference what is 185 minus 55 can we find the difference how much are you getting 130 okay so 130 compared to 85,600 uh, shows that we have got a discrepancy to deal with there. And then the question is saying, which of the following statements may explain the discrepancy? Okay? Uh, I, I wanted you to, to find the difference between uh, 130 and 85,600. Can we please find the difference? What is the difference between 130 and 856? 44,400. 44, please let us be taking notes and uh, your thoughts are in one place. Um, I want us to go to the options now. Um, it appears there could have been an omission from one of these records. And uh, on the smell test, the omission could have been for a disposed asset. So A says the omission of an addition of land. Yeah, there's a possibility for an acquired asset as well. It says the omission of an addition of land costing how much? About 30,000 from the ledger account. And, uh, and the omission of the disposal of an asset from the register of uh, 26. 26, uh, 25, 600 and a commercial depreciation of that much. Let me, let me just put this number side by side so that we can be checking these numbers so that we can see when we can reconcile. I, I, I'm going to say CV here. Uh, should I say CV? I'm going to say um, register. Did you hear that? And then I'm going to say um, general what? Ledger. And then I'm going to bring in the dollars. 
and also you, you do the same. Uh, if you can see what I'm doing on the board, you can do the same. So, unreconciled balances, the broad forward amounts. Uh, we have got uh, initially in the the register 85600. Is that correct? Next, we have got the difference on the other side. Somebody say 130. The difference of 185 and 55. 185,000 minus what? 55. Okay, I'm getting a 130. So let us try option A. And the option that reconciles is the one to pick, isn't it? Is that correct? So let's uh, try option A. Option A says there's an omission of an addition of land costing how much? 30,000 from the ledger account. Uh, let us go and add that land in the general ledger. So you put a 30,000 here, all right? Meaning that there you're going to have a one ski state. Then um, you bring in the other thoughts. We are told uh, for the register, what happened? There's uh, an asset with the cost of how much? 26,600 and accumulated deep of um, 11,200. This particular asset was disposed. So 25,600 minus 112 from here I should think from the register so help me you say 25 what 600 right minus what 11 what 11 2 you're getting how much there? 14 right okay just say. 14 what 14 400 right now you say this since it was a disposal you're going to say 14 400 it's a minus sign eh? now check if the numbers are correct here, there's a 70 what? 71. But there, there is what? A one kissed. So definitely option A is not the correct one. Let us go to the next option. And I'll try by all means to be a bit brisk because we can't be spending too much time on one question. B says the omission of the revaluation of an asset upwards by how much? 16,600. And the depreciation charge of 20,000 from the ledger account. So, in the ledger account, we have got two things there is 16,600 addition and 20,000 less. Okay. From the ledger. So, let's do the work. 16,600 comes in as a positive, right? And then the 20 comes in as a what? Minus. Is that okay? Uh, I'm going to have to delete. Let's go to the register. What is happening in the register? Uh, we told from the register a disposal was omitted, right? A disposal of an asset with a carrying amount of 41,000. Let's do it. If it was a disposal, what should you do? Minus, right? Uh -huh. Now, counter check the totals if uh, they are making sense. This is that number there. And that is that number. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm busy now. Okay, I'll be coming. Yes. <clears throat> All right. You can see this number? 126, I think this is not the option that we're looking for. So we, um, we, uh, we delete this, we come to C. Are you there, under C? The omission of the disposal of an asset from a ledger account of costing how much? 25,600. And accumulated uh, depreciation at disposal of 11, 
11 2. So what I'm going to be asking you to do is please find the difference between the two. 25, 25 600 minus 11 2. How much are you getting? Come again. 14 4. I think it's similar to what we had there. So this one is the ledger account 14 4. Uh, ledger. So you say minus. 14 what? 400. Okay. Are we together? Yeah. I'll try to put it in uh, accounting terms. Then we go back and discuss what is happening in the asset register. And the omission of an addition of land costing how much? 30,000 from the register, right? So what do we do? We add, right? Yes, so let's try to check here if these numbers are tallying. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So these numbers are tallying, right? So meaning that this is the option that we were looking for, isn't it? Is that correct? Is the option that we're looking for. Uh, you can try out the last option and try to see if uh, it makes sense to you. This is D, it says uh, the omission of an upward evaluation of how much? 16.4 from the register. And the accidental debiting of the depreciation charge of uh, 28,000, uh, meaning that we have to, to, to subtract this number by two. But I don't think that this is going to give you the correct answer. I think we have spent too much time on this particular question, I'd like us to proceed. So the answer is C. Uh, let us proceed to 117. 117, someone to read for us. 117, someone to read. Can you please read? And then I'll cut the show. Okay, let's proceed. Now, have you read? Oh, there was no initiative. Huh? But you're coming from a holiday, you should be fresh now. Okay, so L bought an asset on 1st January 20X4 uh, for 235. He has depreciated it at 30% using the reducing balance method. Um, but on 1st January X4, X7, you need to count the number of years. Uh, L revalued the asset to $300,000. Now listen to this. How many, man, how many years, rather, do we have between X, X4 January and um, X7 January? I want you to know that uh, 1st January X7 is as good as uh, the last date of uh, um, X6. So don't count it that way. If you're going to count it that way, you're going to make a mistake. So let's count. X4 is a full year. X5 is a full year. X6 is a full year. I'm, I've got about three years, not four years. Did you hear that? Just about three years. Once it's three years, makes life easy for us. We're depreciating this particular asset uh, using what? Reducing what? Balance. So you come down here, you write your dollar sign, and you say CV, um, open brackets, and you say 235. I hope you are concentrating. <laughs> uh, somebody's going to say you're too fast. 
You should be asking questions. Ask questions where you're not clear. I've got three years, right? You see how we find the CV without taking too much time. At the end of the first year, I'm explaining now, the asset remaining value will be 70% because you could have reduced uh, 30%. Do you understand that? You apply the same, and I think I could have introduced this last time when we were dealing with uh, an introduction to depreciation. Okay? Um, so since it is three years, you have to multiply by 70%. How many times? Three times. You don't have to waste time in the exams. But if you want to insist, is your right, isn't it? Isn't it your right to insist? So, do you want me to do it for you again there? 235,000. Are you there? By what? 70%, right? By what? 70%. Again, by what? 70%. How much are we getting? 80,000? 80, do we agree with that? Uh huh. Now, here comes the revalued amount or new amount, market value, if I may call it in this class. What is the market value of this land? 300,000, right? You can see that, eh? So what is the surplus, the revolution surplus, if we have any? Isn't that the question that the examiner is asking? What accounting entries should lower post anyway? Let's first of all find the surplus. How much is the surplus, the difference, please? 300,000. Mm -hmm. Like that? Okay. <laughs> now you're the accountant there. Yeah. Try to read it again. <laughs> okay. Good. Somebody wanted you to fail, but you haven't failed. Yeah. Now, listen to what I'm going to say. You're supposed to pass entries. Uh, I'm going to teach you two ways, but I think what the examiner wanted you to do was to just come up with... Um, he wanted you to come up with one way. So the first method... Um, that is very basic for this particular double entry is to do you have to debit your asset account did you hear that with how much that number there can you see that and then credit revaluation what surplus did you hear what I said what is he calling it there revaluation surplus right hello revaluation surplus how do we come to that one? Isn't that so? You have got that number there, isn't it? Revolution surplus. This is the simplest way of doing this. But what the examiner is looking for is a different method, which we need to also appreciate. This is what he's looking for. You pay attention, all right? He wants you to debit the asset account with the difference in costs. So what is the difference in terms of cost? 300,000 minus, what was the initial cost? The initial cost was how much? 235, right? So please pay attention to that. 235,000. And then he wants you to reverse the depreciation so far. Did you hear what I said? Reverse what? Depreciation so far. And how do we do that? It is simple. You say the same 200 and what? 235, right? Minus, what was the carrying amount of the asset? After we had calculated everything. 80? 86 is what? 86 is what? Is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? Uh huh. Then he also wants you to credit 
the surplus, which is called the revolution what? So I'm just going to replicate this one so that you don't have to worry about anything. How much was our revolution surplus? I've, I've cut it, eh? Instead of copying. Let me just take it back there. Mm -hmm. Let's just do this. It's supposed to be like this. Put it here. Okay, so uh, how much was the surplus? Can you see that number there? Now, I want you to find the difference between 300,000 and 235. What's the difference? 60 what? Uh -huh. Now, I want you to confirm if we are balancing. Are we balancing? Yes. So, what is the option that you go for? Option A, right? Now, I want you to ask questions where you are not clear. I've given you two methods. There is uh, the first one, which is basic. But there is a second one, which involves how many accounts? Three accounts. So, you can ask questions where you're not clear. Yes. Okay, that's a good question. I think we did it here. We said uh, 235 which was the initial cost of the assets, and then we removed the current value, which was the net book value, to find the total depreciation so far. In other words, the asset value dropped from 235 to 80, 6, 0, what? Yeah, meaning that uh, the space in between is the, is the what? Total depreciation so far. Yes. So that total depreciation was simply found by subtracting the current amount from the cost of the assets. Uh, please, you can write so that uh, you get something. All right, Mr. Elijah, are we safe? How was your holiday? Okay, you you rested. Good. <laughs> it was it was fantastic. <laughs> Just fantastic yeah all right so my people these things are involving but I want you to know that if you follow through using your, your what do you call it your study whatever book and you read again then you should be able to understand these things more you read before the session and you read after the session read around the session so that uh, you become better than the lecturer. That's the whole idea. Hmm? Somebody's laughing. When I say that you become better than the lecturer, somebody's saying that's impossible. The whole idea is for you to be better than the, the lecturer, isn't it? Otherwise, there's no development in this class. So, this road has been traveled before. If Malawi did it, we can also what? can also did it. So don't say we can't do it. We can do it. You know? I think so. Start thinking like that. Can I proceed? Still writing, alright? Please make sure that you start with this particular working, right? Can you see this working on top here? It is a key working because it enables you to counter check which one. The revolution what? Surplus. Very important. Okay. Now, I would like us to progress. Unless there is a question. Do we have a question? Any questions that you may have? Okay. My 
and people don't be in the habit of writing slow. It's not safe for you, you know. Uh, I want us to go to the next question. Question number 118, and I think this is theory. It says, which of the following statements is true in relation to the non-current asset register? Now, this particular register was discussed. It, it is simply a record of the details of non-current assets. So let's begin. A says it is an alternative name for the non-current asset ledger account. Is that true? That does not sound correct, right? B says it is a list of the physical non-current assets rather than their financial costs. Hmm. This also does not sound good. Because we also include the cost of these, you know, assets. We don't just describe them by name. We also include the numbers. C says, it is a schedule of planned maintenance of non-current assets for use by the plant engineer, not the accountant. <laughs> I think there's something wrong again with that particular statement. So specific. Um, it's not just supposed to be used for planned maintenance and so on and so forth. If D is not the answer, there is no answer for this particular one. D says it is a schedule of the cost, a list rather, a catalog schedule of the cost and other information about each individual non current asset. That sounds correct. Did you hear that? That sounds correct. So we go with D. Okay? 119, again, calculations. You don't like calculations? Do you like calculations? 119 says the plant and equipment account in the records of C Company for the year ended 31st December 20X6 is as follows. Now we have got a T account here, and I think this class is already used to T accounts. I'm going just to do about seven or so questions, and I'm going to go to intangible assets. And um, it is very important for you to be asking questions. This is your class. This is your time. I hope you are not here by mistake, but even if it was a mistake, you can still correct it. You understand that? Yes. You know, we hear some people like saying, I'm just studying for the sake of my grandmom. You should be studying for your own sake. Grandmom has lived a life. So, please, interest. We are being, we are, we are, we are being summoned. You, you, you exercise the adequate interest in this case. The opening balance in our T account, nine ski state. I hope you can see that number there. Then we have got um, some assets that potentially could have been bought during the year, costing how much? 48000 in the BPP book, they use uh, additions. And we disposed of some assets valued at how much? 80 what? 84,000. And the closing balance is that number there. And the question is saying, further, C company's policy is to charge straight line depreciation 20% per year on a pro rata basis. You know, when they say pro rata basis, it means Depreciation must be calculated on a monthly basis. Depreciation should be calculated on a monthly basis. Now, the question is, what should be the charge for depreciation in C Company statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 20X6? This should be the simplest question. You know why? It has got no multiple choice. <laughs> so, even if you got the wrong answer. You don't have to worry. <laughs> because it will be arrested by the markers, eh? isn't it? The markers are the ones who are going to deal with the wrong ones. It will not throw you off, off your feet. But in this particular class, we're supposed to make sure that we are accurate. And uh, there is no way such kind of a question can elude us. 
uh, fail us. Uh, I wanted to announce already that uh, if this year is ending on 31st December, then when did it start? When did we start? If we're ending on 31st December. Hmm? First February. Lecturers can also get discouraged, eh? Isn't that so? They can't. They shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Now, how many months do we have between 1st January and 1st July? How many months? Simple. You tell us. Six. But I think the, uh, we should be interested in the months between 1st July and December itself, yeah, because this is an addition. Between 1st July and December, it's another six, right? You agree with that? When was 1st July? Yesterday, was it? Oh, yesterday was 1st August. Okay, thank you very much. And then we also have disposals on 30th September. Uh, that is um, how many months from 1st January? 3rd September, please. How many months from 1st January? Can someone confirm? From 1st January, nine. Uh, nine. nine months, isn't it? Yeah, very important. So once you get that, then it becomes a bit easy for us to uh, navigate. And I'm going to already invite us to do some bit of work. This is a nice question. So you start writing. You get the total, which I saw... One zero zero. How much? You have got your numbers there. One zero zero eight. Now, Mr. Samuel, we call upon your services again. How do you pronounce this one? Come again. Good. She start teaching some of us how to do that. Let's proceed. The next one. So you're going to have to. Talk about the additions, you understand? What we bought during the year, and talk about the disposals, and uh, the balance. What we could have had, held rather, for the full year. What did I say here? The balance was held for the full year, please. Let us remember that. So, let us begin to do some bit of work. There's a reason why I said the balance was held for the full year. There's a reason. So don't say this man is doing, doing things without a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. I'm going to do some bit of work very soon. Um, so let's begin. How much was... Bought during the year 48, right? Do you agree with me? And how much was sold during the year? 84. So what was held during the year will be the difference between the total there on top and these two numbers. Is that correct? How much are you getting? <laughs> Why are you so fast? Which one is more accurate? Can we please confirm if that's a number? Yes. Say something. Come again. Is it correct or is this number correct? He's saying wait. <laughs> Uh-huh. This number is correct? Yes. All right. Can we now proceed? Are you ready? Good. So let's begin. I'm going to start with uh, the full year. Make it simple for us. Depreciation on the full year is 876,000 multiplied by 20%. Uh, you know that 20% is 0 0.2? Do, do we teach maths here? Do we teach maths? Yeah. 
Don't 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 start mm. taking us back to grade four. Uh, so, how much are you getting? Now, to just make you prepared, this this seven eight seventy six rather was held for the full year. So, full year means twelve divided by what? By twelve, which I'm not supposed to put there. Twelve divided by twelve is what? <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm just going to put it for the sake of... Uh, then we talked about uh, the additions, isn't it? For the additions, what did we say? 48,000 by 20% by 6 of all. Yes. Okay, because it's written addition, that's why you want, to, you want us to add them, eh? Yes. <laughs> it's mother tongue interference. <laughs> That's what you call serious mother tongue interference. But we, we shall leave you alone. Uh, but try to explain, Mr. Elijah, why are we lacing them instead of adding them? You know, sometimes when the lecturer is explaining, he's assuming <coughs> that he's talking to his friends. Mr. Elijah, use your language to explain why are we lacing 48 and 84? So the, the point that we're trying to get to is uh, we needed to get a number for assets that were used for the full year. Did you hear that? My owner, now the online lecturers, I mean the online students will not get, be getting this, this language. My owner, you are many held for full year. There's a reason why that was put eh? In fact, that is the whole reason why we are listening. We want to find the value of assets. Are you listening? We want to find the value of assets that we are held for, for year. That's why we are listening. Did you hear what I said? We have to separate, boss, we have to separate the value of assets that was held for the full year from the value of assets that were bought and from the value of assets that were what? Sold off. That's the reason why we are listening. Is that okay? Yes, sir. The way to separate may help. Now, can I proceed? Do we agree that on the 48,000, we held the assets from July to December, so it's six months depreciation? Do we agree? Yes. Hello? Yes. Do we agree? Yes, so that's what you have there. Uh, I'm getting a 48. Are you also getting a 48? Yes. Okay, and then for the. Uh, and by the way, please, listen to this. Whether you, you buy assets or dispose them, you need to depreciate them if you are depreciating on a monthly what? basis. Did you hear that? You need to still depreciate those assets. That is where the key is here. Is that before we sold, we depreciated, isn't it? And when we bought, we depreciated for the months for which we held the assets. Now for the next asset, and we are spending too much time here, I'm concerned, but somebody would say, if we're not understanding, let us spend one hour on one question. <laughs> now listen to this. For the next asset, how many months did we count? You should pay attention to these things and don't underestimate your intelligence. Okay. Mr. Elijah, what are you saying? Nine? So you say... 84,000 by 20%, right? By 9 over what? 9 over 12. Please, I want you to confirm before I, I find the answer there. I want us to confirm. Maybe some people are still in the holiday, four days holiday. Hmm? Mr. Samuel, are you not still in the holiday? Uh, there's no problem. I'll try to get back to the formula. Yes. Uh, are you confirming how much? 12,600. 12,6. How did we find this one, Mr. Are you seeing the breakdown? Okay. So why are we troubling ourselves with a question that does not have multiple choice? <laughs> 
Okay, we need to move to another question. But if there be some, someone who is not clear, let us ask questions, all right? Like the way our colleagues are asking, how are we finding? Can we please uh, move? So the next thing that you do, Mr. Samuel, you have to sum up. Can I wait for you? Sum, sum, sum up all these things, please. Participate. Mr. Elijah, how much did you find? 192,600. 192,600. Others? Same. Same, huh? Mm -hmm. You said same? <laughs> okay. There was, there was a game last weekend. No, there was no game, huh? For Zambia. There was? There was, eh? You lost? No, they lost. Why do you like disowning your teams when they don't perform? You're not a Zambian now. Okay, can I confirm? Hello? You know that we are taking too much time. People are still in the holiday mood. 192,600, is that correct? Yes. Okay, my people, we are running out of time. I think we have done about four questions, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go to 120. On 1st January 20X7, Z Company purchased an item of plant. The invoice showed the following. And uh, of course, uh, we have got uh, other issues given there. Our job is to be able to separate capital expenditure from uh, revenue expenditure. And uh, down there, the question says, what amount should be capitalized? For the plant in Z Company's accounting records. Now, I want us to be on our calculators so that we don't take too much time. Are you on your calculator? Yes. Let's begin. The cost of the plant, free on board. Are we taking that cost? Is that capital expenditure? You remember that, that thing that I drew for you? You know, some people don't like remembering. You know, it's not good, you know, because you are crucifying your tutors. <laughs> eh? The man is laughing. Why should the lecturer remember when someone else is going to, to write? Why, why, why is it like that? Hey, do you remember this? So look at it carefully so that uh, when we are getting back there, you don't give us somersaults. I think you wrote it down somewhere. We need to be eating some garlic and what? Onion. What else? Ginger. Doing some exercises. Reboot. <laughs> Somebody is out there trying to advocate for the ban on the same. Okay, so what do you think about that, that advocacy by the doctor? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> you can't stop. You're a shareholder. You're a shareholder in Zambia Breweries. Are you aware of that? You're shareholders. You know that the major shareholder in a business is a customer. No business can survive without a customer. So these are the major shareholders of Zambia Breweries. We can't stop. We can't help it. Can we please proceed? So I hope you have taken a look at that. Yes. Now let's begin. The cost, is that capital expenditure? Yes, it is, right? Yes. What about delivery to factory? Capital, right? Yes. What about one-year warranty covering breakdown? No. no. What about modification to the factory building costing about... Um, you know, two point, I mean, two two, yes. when necessary to enable the plant to be installed. This is installation, right? Yes. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is you're going to calculate this number 48 plus 400 plus 22. How much are you getting? 5,600. 50 what? 5,600. 5, so, is there a question on that one? Why have we left out one year warranty? Because this particular warranty is going to. Uh, expire within one year, isn't it? 
shouldn't it's not a you know it's not a it's not a long term cost you understand it's not a long term cost all right next 121 and i'm almost there a non current asset was purchased at the beginning of the year for how much for how much at the beginning of year one actually for how much two four Depreciated at 20% per annum using the reducing balance. I like this type of questions. Because <laughs> they're simple. They're simple. I hope they, they can be simple for you as well. Because you're the one who's going to write the exams. At the beginning of year four, it was sold for how much? So for how long did you use it? Chizungu. Chizungu. Those of you who will be listening to us, Chizungu means English. <laughs> So it's three years. Do you agree? Yes. What and it was sold for how much? For one two. What was the profit or loss on disposal? Do you want to try it out? Hello? Or you want this this teaspoon to be put in your mouth? You go for the teaspoon? Alright. Let's try to do it together again. This is um, the asset costed how much? Two four, right? So bring up there CV. Open brackets two four. How many years did we talk about? And what is the rate of depreciation? Twenty percent. So at the end of year one, only eighty percent of the value of the asset remains. Did you hear that? Next. At the end of year two, you, again, you do the same. At the end of year three, you do the same. Is this very difficult to do? <laughs> you know, the idea is to prepare you for the same exams. So how much are we getting when we do the, the product? How much are we getting? Don't give us the answer. Give us how much you're getting there. 1,228. Because we are moving one step at a time. Is that okay? Yes. How much are you getting? 28. Eh? There's some points. Eh? Yes. So we bring in the points. Like that. Eh? Is that correct? Then sold for how much? Hello? Sold for how much? Now, here I'm going to have to ask you to interpret. An asset whose value is that much is sold for one, two. Are you making a loss or a profit? You see, you see now, there are two divergent views and it is impossible for two answers to be what? Correct. <laughs> Somebody is now smiling there. Okay. So which one do you go for? It's a loss of how much? 28.8. Yeah, so um, it is indeed a loss. I agree with you. Which answer did you go for? You went for B, right? You see now, you went for C initially. Should we ask the neighbor? Didn't you say C? No. You didn't say C? Mm -hmm. Can we proceed? The last question and we are done. You do the rest of the question, Mr. Elijah. A business non-current asset had a carrying amount of how much? One what? All right. An asset which at the cost of how much? Was sold for how much? At a profit of how much? What is the question? What is the revised carrying amount of the non-current asset? What? A register. Hmm, nice question. So you know what you need to do? Is to find the CV of the disposed asset. You know how to do it. Someone said, refresh my memory. How many times are we going to refresh your memory? For as long as it takes. Huh? So
So non current asset register has got how much initially? It has got 125, right? And then there was uh, an omitted figure which we need to find working right. We are going to have to do a working right. Do you agree? Let's do it. I just want to remind someone, although I feel that um, you need to start remembering some of these things on your own now. Here there is debit, here there is what? Credit. And of course here we have got dollars, here we have got dollars as well. We are told the asset cost how much? The one that uh, was disposed? An asset which cost 12,000? Is that correct? And uh, of course, uh, I don't like work that does not look neat. So I'm just going to push these things the other side so that the work looks a little bit better. Okay, how much was the money received? 9,000, right? And profit, 2,000. So cash, you write, 9,000. Are you there? And then um, where do we put profits? When we make profits? On the debit, isn't it? How much? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, please don't worry. Just uh, follow what is going on here. Normally we have got depreciation there, isn't it? So that is what we are looking for, actually. What's the sum of 12 plus 2? 14,000, right? Also here, 14,000. So what is 14,000 minus a 9? 5, right? Yes. So that's what you have there. Okay? So... Please complete the work. It's a difference between fourteen and nine. What is we are we are simply balancing the what the account, right? What is fourteen minus nine? It's, it's a five, right? Now, Mr. Elijah, what we're looking for is the CV, right? Which is the difference between what? 12 and what? Five. 12 and 5. What's the difference? Please find. Ah. <laughs> the fence is our lecture. Can the lecture fend? It shouldn't fend, eh? It should be strong. <laughs> Even when the students are performing. 12 minus 5 is how much? 7,000. It's a, it's the one that we're looking for here. Minus what? 7,000. Do you understand? And then we, we say revised. How much is the figure? Revised amount. How much are you? Is that one of your options, Mr. Elijah? Which option is that? B. B, yes. So that's what you have. So... The revision kit is within your phone. It moves with you when you're on the bus, when you're being dropped. Practice as many questions as what? Possible. Do you understand that? Can I stand up a bit? Are you done writing? Is there someone who's saying, I'm not done? This side, are you done writing? Is there someone who's saying, I'm not done? Please... You can finish. All right. So this is going to be shared, I think, on the group, hoping that uh, we can survive. It's a nice day. It depends 
what weather you're experiencing. But you can still change the weather by changing your attitude. So today, we want to focus on intangible what? Intangible assets. Okay. Welcome to our class once again. Yeah? Yeah. It's okay. Or oh, you can ask your colleagues, they're very generous people. Zambians. Very generous, isn't it? Ask. Ah, she's, she's, she's going to give you something. Look at what. <coughs> Intangible assets means what? Let's start from there. What comes to your mind when you hear the word intangible? One room. One room that's been quiet. He doesn't like cold this one room. One room. What comes to your mind? You want to help him? Okay, please assist him. You can come through. You can come through. Yes, you don't look. Hmm? Active. What is happening? Someone. Are we safe? Because <laughs> 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 someone who doesn't does look very, you know, as energetic as they used to. But uh, maybe it's just one of those things. <clears throat> Mr. Samuel, yes. tell us what do you think? <clears throat> what do you think when you, when you hear the word in charge? No, the assets, not like physical support. Good. They are assets. <laughs> Mr. Long. Why are you arguing with the Renet? With the, the people who have studied. Go and study first before you argue with the people who. Okay, he's right actually. If you return the title, let's proceed. Eh? Non current assets include intangible what? Assets. So when we say non current assets, it's an umbrella term. I, I never used to think about that, you know, until I was corrected. So when you say non-current assets, you mean tangible. Non-current assets are what? Intangible. Non-current what? Assets. Say? Tangible non-current assets. And what? Intangible non-current what? Assets. Here, under tangible non current assets, we depreciate, right? Did you hear what I say? Yes. We employ what? Depreciation. But here, what word is used for depreciation? Amortization. And also, we also include what? Impairment. Did you hear that? Impairment. So, please, it's very important for us to see that. Okay. Let's yeah. proceed. Our focus, we need to be able to identify and account for intangible assets. We need to know the basic accounting treatment of research and what? Development what? Expenditure. And I'm going to discuss briefly the theory and then we are going to close class. Is that okay? Yes. I'm going to show you what we're going to learn tomorrow. Tomorrow we're meeting. Oh, obstructing, eh? So, as he has said, non-current asset refers to what? Are you able to read? What can you see? Non-what? Monetary assets without what? Physical what? Substance. <clears throat> Do you know that the most important assets within a business might be non-current assets? Do you know that? Do you know that the most valuable assets within a business might be non-current assets? Do you know that? For instance, if you consider the tech companies, what makes those companies expensive? The tech companies, Facebook and many other tech companies. What makes those companies expensive? It is 
goodwill. Have you ever heard of goodwill? Yes. And do you know that goodwill is an intangible asset? Yes. Why are you scared of buying certain companies? Because of their what? Intangible what? Assets. You can declare yourself dead before you, you even think about that. Because those companies have got value on perception. Perception value is quite high. Did you hear that? Now, to take the point further, let's discuss the examples here. Goodwill, as discussed, is an example of an intangible asset. Okay? Software. What we are using currently, right? Computer software. And I think that projector also has got its own software. That's an intangible asset without physical substance. License. For you to do certain types of businesses, you need a what? A license. Otherwise, you'll be treated very differently. <laughs> if the Zambian government finds you mining without a license, <laughs> The reception will be hostile. <laughs> when someone who is not doing fine finds you doing something that can help you and it's illegal, the reception will be what? Very hostile. They will make sure that before they die, they show you their bad side. So please, license is an intangible asset. Patents, is that correct? What is a patent? When you make Invent something, you might want to patent it, or even when you come up with a nice book, you patent it, isn't it? Writers don't die. Did, did, did you hear what I said? Writers don't die. Write something. Mm -hmm. These issues of saying, let me have as many children as possible so that I can keep my name, it doesn't work. <laughs> The wrong way of thinking. Hmm? I don't like the traditional mind. No, I don't like the traditional mindset. It's very bad, then. Eh? Why should you live your life in other people's lives? Allow your kids to make their own names, right? Do you understand that? Hmm? There are certain names that can never be erased from history because they did something that was right. Progress, brands. So for marketing, advertising, you may want to brand business, may have business plans and the like. Those may attract some names. I think plans might also be used if you want to enter into a franchisee arrangement. Right? Do you understand? There's, a, there's some names out there. Like Hungry Lion. I don't think that Hungry Lion originated in Zambia, did it? The franchise, right? So we're using other people's name. You are being charged for that, right? You'll be charged for that. So it is true that a good name is better than what? Silver and what? But not without money, right? <laughs> a good name without money. Is it possible to have a good name without money? <laughs> okay, can we proceed to the next one? Under recognition, these assets must have economic what? Value. Did you hear that? And then the value must be reliably what? Measured. Should be reliably measured. Reliably measured. The value should be quantifiable. Monetary terms. Let us remember those terms. Okay? It is very easy to learn theory, right? Not new calculations. Calculations are quite important, right? Okay, so can we proceed? Are you still writing? Proceed to the next one. Under measurement, initially these assets will be measured at cost. And then subsequently you can either use cost or what? Fair what? Fair value. 
So as basic as that. Now, fair value simply means market what? Market value. Market value. Measurement is a critical aspect of accounting. We used to ignore it in the past, but today it is something that is critical. You can't produce uh, reliable accounts without paying attention to matters of measurement. For instance, if you bought some land during the time of what you need, you can't continue carrying it at uh, the price at which you bought it. The land has now what? Appreciated, isn't it? Yes. Can we proceed? Even the calculator has got a software, isn't it? Doesn't it? It has a, a basic software, isn't it? Maybe logarithms or something like that. Isn't it? Yeah. So, in fact, the reason why you buy the calculator is because of that same thing. The problem that is within the calculator. Without that, you can't buy. So, intangible assets are all of us, isn't it? Intangible assets. Can we proceed to the next part? Now, the word amortization replaces what? Depreciation here. So, don't go to the office meeting, to the board meeting, and say, we are supposed to be depreciating these licenses. Somebody will say, there's someone who is getting too, too much. I told you, for you to make money in this day, don't allow people to figure you out. <laughs> if they just say, sense that there's someone who is not qualified in their midst, they'll check you out. Now, Amortization like depreciation, similar to depreciation, is a method of writing off the cost of the intangible asset over its economic what? Nice. Useful life. It's very important for us to see that. Okay? Of course, amortization will be based on what? Company, managers, discretion, business policy. So please let us remember that. Let us remember that. So in our next uh, slide, we want to introduce the difference between research and what? Development. There should be a difference. Next time when you ask what's the difference, we shall tell you, first of all, the spellings out, not the same. Did you hear that? Okay. So let's begin from there. Research means investigation. To research means to do what? To investigate. Did you hear that? They do this a lot. These guys will do academic programs. I need to call someone today. I need to call someone. They do this. You know, the academicians, they pride in what? Research. What is research? Investigation. Let me tell you something. If you're going to do mining, or if you're going to invest your money in mining activities, and if it is green mining activities, green, when I say green, I mean uh, starting mining in a particular location for the first time, you need to hear the word investigation. You understand? Because you throw your money in a black hole, and it will never come back to you. Before we can say, let's invest, there must be some people who should assess the area, right? Whether it contains what? The minerals or the oil that we are looking for. So listen to this. Before you can invest money in anything worthwhile, first of all, do what? A research. Did you hear that? Yes. It is called smart business practice. You know, they like saying in business, trust your feeling, but also listen to your mind. You understand that? These issues of just going by the feeling, you're going to drop dead one of these good days. What if you invest all that you had and it will never come back to you? 
Can we proceed? So, for instance, if we are going to plan for um, mass production of a new computer, you need to wait until the initial computer that you're going to mass produce reaches what is known as prototype stage. Did you hear that? A prototype, the origin of something. Once you come up with a prototype of something, that's when you can go ahead and do what? Mass production. Otherwise, when you start multiplying your idea without taking care or without care, you're going to hit into losses. And certain losses, they have sent people to their area what? Green. Certain losses. They can send you to, your, to an area what? Green. So please, what we're saying is that investigate first. After you have investigated, you will reach what we call commercial viability stage, where you can derive economic benefits from your projects. Then you can now bring in which word? Development. Did you hear that? What is development? Development is the application of research findings in such a way that you are able to derive economic benefits. But the question is how? It is either you reduce what? Your, your, your costs or increase your what? Earnings through your projects. But for accounting purposes, and at this level, I don't want even to go very far. Why do we bring in this discussion to make a distinction between the two? Research expenditure should be treated as revenue what? Expenditure. Did you hear that? But development expenditure should be treated as what? Capital what? Expenditure. I saw the word asset expenditure there. It is nice. So, Capital expenditure here, meaning that development expenditure, Mr. Samuel, is an uncurrent what? Asset. Did you hear that? It is an asset. It is an asset. It is an asset. Could there be some question? For us to say development expenditure is an asset, there must be a criteria that you should follow. And it is known as the power rate criteria. I want you to write something. Condition for the recognition of development expenditure includes number one, there must be probable flow of economic what? Benefits from your project. I'm going to skip the rest of the items and go down here. You should be able to reliably measure the expenditure of your development what? Project. Otherwise, you don't have an asset. Remember, for us to recognize an asset, there must be economic what? Benefits, as well as reliable what? Measurement. Two things. So when one of these two things, which I call the primary criteria, is missing, then we do not have development expenditure. So please, write something. I'm coming to explain.
Right, so let us try to see if we can make some progress. Uh, I, I want to discuss the, the items in the middle there. Uh, for you to, to recommend the development expansion, then it should be a, you should have an intention. This way, the intention is future. Did you hear that? Intention, future. Intention, should be understanding the English. Yeah, there's a reason why. You should have an intention to start and complete the what? The project. Intention, meaning commitment. You understand that? Yes, there must be enough commitment. Um, and then there is another one. Um, you should have the adequate, uh, adequate what? Resources. Now this includes money, you know, we teach management. The four M's, right? Money, ma man, machines, and what? And management, yes. You need to have enough resources to start and complete your what? Your project. The enablers. Next. You should have the ability to use or sell the output of the development what? projects. Now, in this case, if you are going to use, you might be reducing your, your operat operating costs. If you are going to sell, you are going to increase your, your economic benefits in form of cash flows. Very likely. Then finally, there must be technical what? feasibility, meaning that we, we must have some people with technical expertise in our team who should be able to, let's say, write a computer what? program. You understand? Or come up with a drug. If you're going to come up with a drug, uh, you need someone who has done medicine. You understand? To help you to do that. Otherwise, it's illegal for you to start doing that on your own. Okay, so... If those criteria are there, then definitely you are going to have your development expenditure. Next time, what are we going to look at? What's the time now? Don't say it's time to knock off. <laughs> Zero nine off? 24. Yeah, interesting. Can I discuss the theory? We are tired? You're tired? You're tired? Yeah. What I can say is I need that. I know I can say yes. Okay, too much of anything. But thank you. Sometimes you should be knocking off early. These issues of every time. So what you what is going to happen then is that you're going to have to attempt certain questions. Did you hear that? Let me just show you what you're going to do. Uh, control find. Intangible what? The first seven questions. In fact, since you are saying that, Seo Talei Magbunzila, start attempting. In the next 20 minutes, seven questions. This, these are theories. From 146 to what? Can you, can you see those? This is page what? Page seven, right? Tien, 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 tien. So from 146 to page what? I mean to question what? Which one are we going to have? 153? Hello? 146. That's about four. Then the other one. Yeah, so to 153. You attempt those questions from 146, please. Attempt page what? Page seven, right? Question what? 140 what? To question what? 153. How many minutes? 20 minutes. Congratulations. Let's do the work, please. Tien, 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 and uh, Mr. Elijah, uh, you collect all the all the books, bring them over, bring them over, bring the books over for marking. You have it, eh? Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to end.